puzzles. There's these four little puzzles with the animals on them. Uh, well, it's one puzzle with four pieces, actually. And this puzzle here, which has got six shapes to it, and both are intended, obviously, for a young child. I'll show you how to make them both. I was loving starting a new project, and this one actually has two within it. It's uh, little puzzle shapes came from Steve Good, and there's actually two variations in it. There's this puzzle with the shapes, and this puzzle with the animals. I'll start cutting with the animal puzzles. I had a number seven Pegasus modified geometry blade in the saw from my last project, and I'll go ahead and use that. I could have used a number five blade on half inch material, but I have two reasons for going with the number seven. First, these cuts for the puzzle shapes aren't complex, and a larger blade will cut faster. Second, I want to ensure those pieces will slip apart and go back together easily because these puzzles are intended for a young child. The purpose of the puzzles is to entertain while teaching shapes and eye-hand coordination, so you want them to be easy to slip together. I followed the cut line to where the loop for the puzzle came up. I found the best way to make tight turns like the one needed here is to cut right up to the point where you need to change direction with the cut. You then back the blade up a tiny bit so it is no longer cutting, but keep the blade running up and down. You can now use the curve you just created to gently turn the workpiece until the front of the blade is pointed in the direction you want to cut next. The tip of the blade will nibble away just enough material for you to be able to make the turn. Now, start cutting in the next direction you need to go to follow the cut line. Once I finished this first cut across the piece that divided it in two, I performed an accuracy test. The puzzle pieces should easily slip apart and back together again from either direction. If the pieces worked in one direction but not the other, this would mean that the blade was not at a perfect 90 degrees to the table or I was putting too much pressure on the blade, causing it to flex. Flexing can cause a curved or angled cut rather than the desired 90 degrees. The pieces work perfectly in either direction, so the first cut passed the test. There are only four pieces to this puzzle, so it only took two more cuts to finish making these cuts. I'm making two of each puzzle, but there is no need to show me cutting the second puzzle since it's the same as the first. I'll come back and make the inside cuts for the animal shapes later. While I have the number seven blade in the saw, I'll continue with the other cuts in the half inch red oak. What I'm making here is a frame for the geometric shapes. I drilled a pilot hole for each shape, and they will be just scrap after they're removed from the frame. The frame is a half inch thick, and the shapes will be cut from one inch thick stock, so they will be easy to handle and fit inside the frame. I decided to make the cuts for those shapes on the outside of the lines. This will ensure the cutouts are slightly oversized, making it as easy as possible for a child to place each shape inside the corresponding opening. These geometric shapes aren't difficult to cut, so this would be a good project for a beginner on the scroll saw. It would be a great place to build up your skill level so that you would later have the confidence to tackle a project with lots of small, complicated inside cuts. For a beginner, the 90 degree angles are likely the most difficult to learn to get nice, crisp corners. The square and the cross will give you some practice on these. My method is to cut down a line until I get to a corner, then stop the blade cutting right at the point of the intersection. I then back off the blade very slightly and use the saw curve just created as a space to pivot the workpiece to the new direction I want to cut. Then I start pushing the wood into the blade once again. With a little practice, you'll find you can get very sharp corners. When I first saw the animal puzzle, I thought the animals were supposed to be cut out as puzzle pieces. I couldn't figure out how to cut them out without the pilot hole, leaving a goofy looking spot on either the animal or the frame around it. Plus, I thought they were rather small and could be easily lost or be a choking hazard for a small child. But when I looked at the photo again, I realized that the animals were only cutouts on the four puzzle pieces. Now the pattern made a lot more sense. I put a number five Pegasus modified geometry blade in the saw for these cuts. Though not as complex as some interior cuts, they had enough detail that I felt the number five blade would be a better choice than a number seven. When choosing a blade size, I take into consideration the thickness of the wood, the relative hardness of the wood, and the complexity of the pattern I'll be cutting. 
The hotter and thicker the wood, the larger the blade size I'll choose. The more complex the pattern, the smaller the blade size. If you'd like more information on this subject, I'll link my video on the topic on screen and in the description. The four little animal cutouts add a lot of detail and interest to what otherwise would have been four plain puzzle pieces. Orienting the animals right side up will also give clues as to which way to face the puzzle pieces when putting them together. I'm cutting the geometric shapes next, but I wanted to check the fit before I got too far into these. The heart shape fits easily, so now I can confidently cut the rest of the shapes. Per the plans, I'm cutting these from one inch thick stock, in this case, red oak. I had a long, narrow strip of six quarter oak left from another project, and it was perfect for these shapes. I planed it down to one inch thick, covered it with scroll saw tape, and then attached the patterns. I switched to a number nine Pegasus modified geometry blade due to its thickness. A number seven would cut too slowly, and it would be difficult to make the sharp turns with a number 12 blade. As I mentioned when I was cutting the frame, I made those cuts on the outside of the lines to ensure the fit wouldn't be too tight. Since I now know there's room to spare, I can make the cuts for the shapes right on the line. I want the fit to be loose, but not sloppy. The plus sign was a bit of a challenge to cut because of the 90 degree angles. I cut to each intersection, backed off slightly on the blade, and then used the saw blade kerf just created to pivot the workpiece 90 degrees to the next direction I wanted to cut. Then I started feeding the workplace into the blade once again. I counted them, and this shape has 12 90 degree corners. I hadn't noticed while cutting the plus sign, but the sides are not the same width, so this shape will fit only when the longer sides line up with the longer openings. This may make putting this piece in place a tiny bit more challenging for a young child. The square was the next shape to make, and I could have cut it in the same manner as the plus sign, but I'll show an easier way to make 90 degree corners. Since these parts are laid out on a narrow piece of stock and they're only one wide, two sides of the square are close to the edge of the stock. I started cutting at one side of the workpiece and cut a line all the way across. Then I made the same cut on the side of the square parallel to the first. So now, rather than having to make a 90 degree turn while cutting, I was able to make the last two cuts as straight lines from one side of the board to another. This option isn't always available, but when it is, you can take advantage of it as I did here. I could feel the blade was getting dull as I made the third cut, and my sense of touch was not leading me astray. The blade was getting dull, as evidenced by the burning left on about half the cut. Fortunately, this was on a flat surface, so I'll be able to clean it up with just a little touch up on my belt sander. I tossed that blade and put in a new one for the rest of the shape cutting still ahead of me. I obviously had to start cutting the first point of the star on the outside edge of the wood, but unlike the square, there was no easy option for cutting the first angle. It was an obtuse angle, large enough to be an easy turn to the next side. I followed the line to the next turn, which was going to be an acute angle. I tried to make it in place, but I went a little past the tip of the star, and the best way to correct the error was to cut to the edge of the material, then come back and sharpen the point by coming in from the outside. With that goof corrected, I continued cutting until I arrived at the next intersection. This was another easy angle, so I made that just by shifting the workpiece. Following the next line again took me near an edge, so I kept going. This next section's angle was too far from an edge to be practical to stop, back the blade out, and come back from an edge again. You just have to use your judgment at each intersection to decide which is the fastest, easiest, most efficient way to make the change in direction that will leave a nice, sharp point. The circle was the next shape to make. While there obviously aren't any angles to cut here, it's worth noting that it's not easy to accurately cut a circle. It's easy to leave small bumps or straight sections if you're not careful. The best advice I can give on making a circle is to keep the workpiece moving steadily, using your hands to keep the motion as consistent as possible. If you goof, making corrections later on a sander is not easy either, so it's best to get it right the first time. The pentagon is the last shape needed for the puzzle. It was near enough the edge that I made the first cut straight across and off the next edge. The angles were large enough that it was easy to make them just by pivoting the workpiece as I came to each intersection. After I finished cutting the pentagon, I gave it a test fit against the frame. 
I was a little surprised to find that it only fit in one direction. The sides are different lengths. So this shape may also be a challenge for a toddler. The animal puzzles require a frame that the four square pieces will fit into. The plans call for a quarter inch thick material for the frame and the backer behind the frame. It would have been a better look to make the frame and backer from oak to match the puzzle pieces, but I ran out of half inch thick oak. If I had some in stock, I might have considered planing it down to a quarter inch thickness. The frame and back were a little too wide for me to consider resawing four quarter oak in half, then planing it the rest of the way down to one quarter thick. I had enough quarter inch plywood on hand that I could use it for these pieces. It took only a few minutes to cut the square out of the middle that the puzzle pieces would fit into. With the square cut from the middle of the frame, the next step was to glue the frame to a backer. Now there are means to hold the four puzzle pieces in place from both sides, as well as the bottom. I used a small glue bottle to squeeze a thin bead of glue onto each side of the frame. This white glue is water soluble, so I used my finger to spread it around evenly. I purchased this set of mini spring clamps specifically for projects like this. I started with one clamp in each corner, then added a couple to each side. These clamps are quick and easy to apply and give enough downward pressure to hold the two surfaces together while the glue dries and cures. You want to make sure to use enough clamps on thin materials like this because the moisture can cause the wood to warp and leave gaps. The last glue up step was to add the backer to the frame for the geometric shaped puzzles. I used a glue bottle to place a bead of white glue on the frame, then I used my finger to spread the glue out evenly. This glue is water-based, so I can easily wash off any that I miss with a paper towel. This assembly is three quarters of an inch thick, so those mini clamps aren't big enough, but I also have a supply of medium-sized spring clamps. I'll put one on each corner and one on the middle of each long side. I'll do the same on the second puzzle, then set both aside to dry, probably overnight. I can just peel the patterns off the geometric shapes since I attached them with scroll saw tape, but I used spray adhesive to attach the patterns to the frames. It's most likely going to take a few minutes with a random orbit sander to remove those. Then everything will be ready for finishing. This is what the puzzles look like after a couple of warm satin spray polyurethane coats. The puzzles were easy for a beginner, but still fun for an experienced scroll sawyer like me. I would appreciate it and will respond to any comments. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be alerted anytime I post a new video. I generally upload one new video every week, but if you're in the mood for watching more now, there will be a suggestion on the screen for the next video to check out. I'll see you there.